A vegan diet might look like it's improving your kidney function, but it's actually not doing it. Hello everyone, this is Felix Mueller, your friendly neighborhood kidney hacker, and you're joining me on episode number two of the Reversing PKD podcast. For some of you, the notion of reversing PKD might still be something new, so if it is, check back to episode one. Today, we're going to talk about one of the most common misconceptions in diet for PKD, and that is this. A vegan diet might look like it's improving your kidney function, but it's actually not doing it. How does that work? Well, for that, we're going to have to explain something more basic, which is creatinine metabolism. When you go to your doctor and you get your... EGFR done, which is the estimated glomerular filtration rate. Actually, this is not a percentage, but it is a number that is measured in milliliters per minute. Common misconception. You are actually getting an estimation that is based on the assumption that you are metabolizing something called creatinine, which you're probably also familiar with, at a certain rate. And that also assumes that your total amount of creatinine that is there for you to metabolize is the same as in everybody else. And more importantly, the same as in your last test, which you're comparing yourself to. Creatinine is a result of your body mass and more importantly, muscle mass. So if you change your muscle mass, you also change how much creatinine is there for your kidney to metabolize. So there's actually two variables in this, not just one. It's not just about kidney function, but it's also about the total amount of creatinine that is there for your kidney to filter. Now, most people make this error that they don't even take into account what the total amount of creatinine in their body might be. Since this is totally dependent on your body mass, it can change. So if you're doing regular exercise and you're growing your muscle, then you're also increasing the total amount of creatinine, especially if you're consuming adequate protein to fuel muscle growth. So in theory, you would expect, for example, a standard bodybuilder to have worse EGFR results than anybody else. And this is in fact true. So a bodybuilder with the same kidney function as me or you will probably fare worse on a blood result because there's so much more creatinine for his kidney to metabolize. And many people mistake this for an increase or decrease in kidney function when in actuality, it's a difference in the total amount of creatinine that is there for your kidney to metabolize. So if you are increasing your protein intake, for example, then you might get a little bit of muscle growth. You might actually become healthier in that area, which is good, right? Muscle growth is important for healthy aging and low muscle mass is actually one of the predictors for early death. So you wanna have good muscle mass. What uneducated patients and even some doctors might say is, well, you increased your protein intake and see what happened to your kidney function. It's lower now. No, it's not. It's actually probably remained the same or even increased as animal protein over the long term has actually been shown to increase kidney function. I know this is going to blow the minds of so many people, but it's true. And uh, we know that the proteins that are derived from animals, uh, they tend to increase uh, kidney function reflected as or calculated as glomerular filtration rate in a dose dependent fashion. High quality animal protein actually increases the capability of your glomeruli. It's actually called glomerular hypertrophy, which means the glomeruli, which are the heads of your nephrons, of the functional units of your kidney, they actually grow when they have adequate protein, which is good because many of us need to compensate for some lost kidney function. And that included me, by the way, and my body did great in making up for that. So now you know that creatinine is actually a result of both your kidney function and also your muscle mass. 
You can also get your kidney function estimated by measuring cystatin C and estimating it from that. Cystatin C is another protein. It's actually what's called a protease inhibitor. And that one is not dependent on muscle mass, which is super important. So next time you want to estimate your kidney function and you have changed actually your body composition in one direction or the other, it's probably a good idea to switch over to a measurement of cystatin C and estimating your kidney function from that. Now that brings us to the vegan diet. Most people that switch to a vegan diet are inadvertently going to reduce their muscle mass. They're going to lose weight. Some people might even think this is great because they wanted to lose weight. Well, you're losing muscle, actually, probably gaining fat over the long term. You are reducing your muscle mass, which means that you are reducing the total amount of creatinine that is there to be filtered by your kidneys. That, in many cases, leads to a steep increase in EGFR. And they're elated. They think, wow, my kidney function went up like that just because I went on a vegan diet. I'm here to break it to you. It didn't. Your kidney function didn't increase when you went on that vegan diet. What happened is you decreased your protein intake, which means you lost muscle mass, which means you're worse off than before. But now there's less for your kidney to filter. Many people confuse the fact that the kidneys have to filter creatinine, which is related to protein metabolism, with that filtration process deteriorating the kidney function itself. It doesn't. It's just a symptom of lower kidney function. Filtering creatinine or filtering protein is not something that decreases kidney function in and of itself. It doesn't. Eating adequate protein actually increases kidney function, especially and probably only if it's animal protein. Plant proteins don't seem to have the effect on the glomerular hypertrophy that we talked about before. So they don't increase kidney function. But at least when you're getting adequate protein on a vegan diet, you're probably not going to lose muscle mass. So at least you're not kidding yourself. Most people actually, when they go vegan, they actually eat lower protein. So it's not a fair comparison to what you were doing before. What happens when you switch to this lower protein diet and looks like an increase in function is what I call the lightning bolt effect. It looks like an increase, but it's not. And if you look closely, you will see that over the following months and years, in reality, you're actually declining at the same rate that you were before. But now you lost some time because initially you thought you were doing better and you should probably continue on that vegan diet. Well, that was a mistake. And now is your time to make good on that mistake and stop the vegan diet because it's not helping you. You're inadvertently increasing your intake of plant defense chemicals like phytic acid, oxalic acid, phytoestrogens, and so on. So this really is not a strategy that is conducive to overall health. What you want to do instead is go and focus on the bulletproof diet, which will give you a lot of plants, um, mostly non-starchy ones. And you're drowning those plants in fat, which is great. Um, saturated fat, mostly grass fed butter, uh, MCT oil, um, tallow, coconut oil, avocado oil. Although be very careful with that because most brands actually uh, cut their oil with uh, canola oil and you really don't want to do that. Um, you really, really, really want to skip all the seed oils like canola oil, sunflower oil etc. Um, and we go into the details on that in another video. But seed oils are disabling your mitochondria and they're giving you a lot more glycolysis than you want to have um, because that is already a problem in PKD. What you do want as your protein source is grass fed beef, grass fed lamb and other animal protein sources that are very high bioavailability and very low in anti nutrients and toxins like glyphosate. You can look at a list for the Diaz score to find the most bioavailable proteins and see which ones of those fit you the best. 
However, make sure that you're actually not sensitive to dairy because uh, a lot of these proteins are actually dairy based. And uh, I like dairy, but you have to make sure that you're not sensitive to it. There are some kinds of dairy that are better than others. For example, um, one of my favorite kinds of dairy is Parmigiano Reggiano, which means it's a Parmesan cheese that is from Italy and it has been um, made with raw milk that's been sourced from grass-fed cows and has been fermented for a long time. So a lot of the problematic uh, stuff in the cheese is already broken down for you. So I hope this covers most of the vegan trap and explains why people are raving about vegan diets sometimes. And it's usually the ones that just started and got that initial lightning bolt effect and the illusion of improvement, which really is not there. If you came to veganism from an ethical or environmental perspective, I can also tell you that these aspects are propaganda and they are not true. If you compare how a grass-fed cow is living its life until it's uh, optimally actually shot on the field one day to whatever happens to the millions and millions of animals like rodents, frogs, deer that are being mowed down and whose habitats are being destroyed by large-scale agricultural uh, operations that farm wheat, soy and other vegan staples then you will find that eating a little bit of beef every day is the far better option from an ethical perspective. If you look at it from an environmental point of view, there's also a great case to be made for eating beef since cattle keep the grass in a continuous rapid growth phase, meaning it's sequestering three times more carbon than a forest actually would. And all the carbon goes into the soil, improves the soil thickness and quality. And the alternative way of eating which would be veganism, would not sequester any carbon in the soil because this industrial farming is actually what's destroying our soils. And soil is life. If we don't keep our soils healthy, we're going to lose the ability to produce food in the next 50 years. This is a horrible perspective. So we better get to it and eat some grass-fed beef and support some local farmers that are doing the right thing, keeping cattle on the pasture, improving our soils and our food in the process and stop relying on large-scale agricultural food production that is destroying the planet. I hope this has given you a new perspective on veganism and what are some of the misconceptions around it. I hope you're not affected by the lightning bolt effect, but if you are, then it's high time to switch your diet back to something like the Bulletproof Diet, which you can learn more about in the first episode. Leave me a comment, a like, Subscribe to this channel if you want to learn more about reversing PKD. If you're listening on any of the podcast apps, then uh, I would be very, very happy if you gave me a five-star rating on whatever platform you're using. Until then, everybody, happy healing.